Hey guys, Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we're going to look at a team for the Sand Devil boss that is going to be much more accessible for a lot of players if you have the right champions, and it's going to be easy for you to set up and not have to commit so much of your resources into. The times on this boss is relatively good, and there are some flexibility options around different ways to beat it. So as we know by now, this boss is quite challenging. He's got this big AoE nuke feasting swarm that will probably kill you if you're trying to fight it at stage 20 or higher he can't take any debuffs unless he's asleep he really pretty much cleanses himself he's a bit of a nightmare to find a, a, a sort of a good team for there have been a couple of strong really fast teams if you've got like the acrisias and the cardiels which is pretty inaccessible for i would say 90 percent of the player base who aren't really willing to spend loads and loads and loads of money trying to get these champions the other teams that i've seen are extremely slow unkillable options we're talking 10 minute plus and to be honest this dungeon is something you want to do within two to three minutes you don't want to be sitting there like a clan boss team every single day sure you can run it overnight but if we're being honest, anything that is over five minutes is probably going to be too slow. Now, if you caught my patch notes video breakdown yesterday, you will understand that 24 and 25 are pretty much the stages we want to farm for greater and superior, with superior being much better on 25 than 24. But these stage stats are extremely high. We are talking 260 plus speed. We're talking 17,000 attack on the boss, 14,000 defense on the boss. And pretty much, unless you're bringing enemy max HP or some form of bomb slash burn slash different kind of concept, you're not going to be able to deal damage to this boss because he will reduce incoming damage by uh, 75% unless you have debuffs out there. If you have 10 debuffs, he doesn't do that, but it's very hard to sustain those debuffs at those speeds. He's also going to boost his turn meter by 50%, and he will also deal more damage as he goes through the fight because obviously he's going to reduce your enemy max HP. That's going to cause you problems. So you need a healer. You need a lot in this team. But what I have discovered, and I have to put some disclaimers here, this is not a unique concept that I have come up with. I have used the team suggestions on the Hell Hades Optimizer. So let's get into the team. We're going to look at stage 24 first. Affinity is an important factor to consider here. We are basically against a spirit and a force. So therefore, magic-based champions are not ideal for 25. Force-based champions are not ideal for 24. This is the team we're going to use. It's not even a team, it's two champions. It is Godseeker and Neri, and it is Ninja. Now, Godseeker and Neri, she has a very, very powerful kit. To be honest, she is basically borderline legendary. She has a passive. Whenever an ally dies, she preempts that hit and places revive on death for them for one turn. Now, this is based on team order normally. If everyone dies at the same time, she will revive the champion in the highest team order because that champion is the first one to die. So in this instance, we put her in the leader that will revive herself. She then has a single target revive, which also resets all of their skill cooldowns. It's an important factor to note. She fully resets their skill cooldowns so they can use their priority debuffs skills when it comes up and it's also a 15 percent heal we also have a heal on the a1 she can't heal herself but she'll heal ninja and all healing is re increased by 10 percent so that's an important factor to remember so the idea here is we're going to use her revive on death passive to revive herself and then use the single target revive to revive ninja now ninja is amazing for the a2 there are alternatives to ninja here there are no alternatives to godseeker and neri unfortunately if you don't have a neri this strategy will probably not work for you although you might be able to find another champion that can do it maybe a cardiel maybe a mother sabelle does work i don't really know um we'll have to see but for this particular strategy godseeker and neri is irreplaceable but ninja is all about his a2 here he places a burn, he activates the burn. That's the key thing here. He's going to get three HP burn activations because he's placing then activating. It's a lot of damage. This is what makes him a boss killer. So in terms of how the run is going to work, we'll have a look at the stats afterwards. It's full auto from the start. Aniri comes in and she's going to A1. And then we take the big feasting swarm nuke. This puts the boss to a sleep. She revives, then Ninja's going to come in and do his burns. And you can see the damage already we're going to get through. HP burn is not reduced by his damage reduction passive. It's a, one of the best ways to kill him. So we basically then have to make sure we survive and heal our way through until the next Feasting Swarm. The Feasting Swarm window when he sleeps himself and then you use the Ninja A2 is the important factor. 
Now, remember I said she resets your champion's abilities when she revives. That is important here because she's going to reset the ninja's A2, which means when he comes back up, he has the ability to place those burns while the boss is asleep. The other thing to note is the slumber counter. You have five hits. Now, it's not actually hits. If you check the raid digest, it's literally just come out as I've been recording this video. Apparently, the hit should actually say damage. Now, it's pretty fundamental difference. If we have a look at this description here, decreases Alnheimer's slumber counter by one whenever Alnheimer is hit. Well, apparently that is not hit. That is when he takes damage. It's a pretty fundamental difference, I have to say. That's not a typo. That's a completely different mechanic. This is why Warmaster is activating here when the slumber counter is up because he's taking damage. In this team, you do not run Warmaster. We don't want to wake him up at all. You can see the hits are only there to keep the healing up. When he is asleep, that is our heal window for returning max HP to us. If we don't have the ability to restore max HP, this will not work. So you can see that the rotation is pretty much similar, straightforward. We're, we're running through here. We're going to get a Feast in Swarm in a second. We want to make sure we're tanky enough to survive the A1 and the A2. Nuke, revive, revive the ninja, and then ninja can A2. Now, the only downside to having a one-star ninja and not a six-star ninja here is the Brimstone is not 100%, which means he has a chance to place the Brimstone in windows when the boss is not asleep. Like, you know, now, for example, the debuff will get blocked and it will put it on cooldown. So when you get to 100% Brimstone, this is much faster. But at a, a, a sort of two champion builds here, we're doing this in sort of two to three minutes. This is a relatively slow run for my testing, but it is 100% chance to do this. Uh, we have not failed at all so far. I've done around 10 runs with this team and it has been perfect every single time. The key is you do not run Warmaster. We're going to look at the builds and we're going to look at the mastery sets in a second once this run finishes but that is the key you don't want to have any form of phantom touch wall master any additional hits we want to try and keep the hit count low so that we can maximize the sleep time so we're just coming to the end of here as you can see it's falling naturally and the boss is down three minute run full auto with two champions so let's take a look at the builds now the god seeker aniri build is more important because she is void affinity the key thing here is Ninja was strong affinity to the boss, so he can never get crit by the boss, whereas Godseeker Neri can. So you need to get a, a certain level of effective HP on your champion here. Ideally, she has to be in at least regen, but regen immortal is a good idea. As you can see here, I've got her in regen immortal, and we are at 4.3k defense and 63k HP. You can probably afford to lose a little bit of defense here, but I would say if you're using the Hell Hades optimizer, Anything less than 300,000 effective HP. There's a stat on your champion build. It'll tell you how much effective HP you have, EHP. Anything less than about 300, 310,000, this will probably fail. When I had my Godseeker Neri built at sort of 4k defense and 58,000 HP, she died. So it's very fine margins. This build, she's pretty much 100% comfortable with. You don't need resistance. I've got a little bit of resistance on here because I've got some on amulets, but you don't need resistance, you don't need accuracy, you don't need crit rate. You just need the speed to be plus one of the boss, ideally. You want the you want Godseeker Neri to be just slightly faster than the boss. She will take the decrease speed, which kind of affects the speed tune a little bit. But generally speaking, you want to be plus one the boss. And then in terms of your ninja, you want your ninja to be within 20 speed of Godseeker. That's the, that's the nice ratio, plus one and then within 20, 25 of Godseeker so that he is in the right rotation. In terms of masteries here, we are running some sort of unusual mastery sets. As I said, you don't want any offense masteries. We don't really need the accuracy. We don't need the resistance. We don't want Aniri taking any more damage than she has to. So we don't want Bulwark. So we actually just take Elixir of Life. We just want to take more damage. HP. The more HP she has, the stronger our regen and immortal sets will be, which means when the boss is asleep, the more maximum HP we're going to restore. We take Shadow Heal. It's a very powerful mastery for this boss. He's going to heal on the A2. He heals for the amount of enemy destroyed max HP, so the amount of HP we have lost. He heals himself, so anytime he heals himself, we're going to get 6% healing back as well. We also take the Healing Lay on Hands, Healing Savior, merciful aid and this rejuvenation so we are getting about 20 to 30 percent more healing from regen and immortal it's really powerful we take cycle of magic just because it returns our a2 for more healing 
Spirit haste is not really needed, but we need a path down here to Elixir of Life. And then we're just taking counterattack masteries. It doesn't really matter if she counterattacks, the boss will be awake anyway, so it doesn't matter. Delay death here for extra damage reduction. This 5% is pretty good. The boss only does AoE damage. So that is God Seeker Ranieri. That is the most important build to nail. If you can get her to be safe, that will be fine. When this run fails, it's either because Ninja dies and she revives him early, or she dies and she uses a passive early. You need to make sure you die on the Feasting Swarm. Now, in terms of Ninja, Ninja is built in a similar manner. We've got Ninja in just regen with a bit of perception. He does need accuracy. Obviously, to land these buffs, these debuffs, he needs accuracy. So we have a slightly different build here. We, again, are running at 2,000 defense and 64,000 HP. His effective HP can be a lot lower because he's strong affinity. So he's going to get weak hits and he can't be crit. We need 520 accuracy, I think, for the highest stage of a boss. It's about 505 for stage 24, but he is weak affinity to stage 25. So you can't really run Ninja on stage 25. We have a solution for that. Crit rate doesn't matter. 246 speed, as I said, he's within 20, 25. And that is how we've built him. And in terms of masteries, we've gone for Master Hexer. We want to try and extend the burn as much as we can. We've gone for Eagle Eye. And we've just gone for some basic stats here, a bit of accuracy. Again, taking Shadow Heal for that extra chance of healing. So that is the team setup. You only need those two champions. What about stage 25? Well, for stage 25, Walking Tomb Drang is a great option. He's not as fast as Ninja, but my Walking Tomb Drang here right now is unbooked. He lacks masteries. He's HP based, which means you can build him tankier. But this burn is irresistible. And this A1 will then activate the burn, which basically means you do not need to run accuracy on him. In terms of his build right now, we have got him in one set of regen. And he is currently built to 76,000 HP and 3,000 defense. 242 speed, again, within that 2020 find range. We don't need accuracy. We don't need resistance. You could build him 100% crit rate. Because he's HP based, you'll be able to run a lot more different stats variations because you'll be able to get to enough effective HP without having to index so heavily into HP. He's got around about 5,000 more base HP than Ninja, which is a big difference. He's got about, uh, I think it's about 50 to 100 more base defense. As you can see right now, my 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 walking tomb dragon has basically got starter masteries. We've got a little bit of healing for the regen. We haven't built our way down. To, op to optimize this, you want to take Master Hexer so we can get a better chance of activating twice on the A1. We'll go through that detail in a second. We would take Shadow Heal and we would take the same set of masteries, probably taking Bulwark here for Walking Tomb Drang, just to help God Seeker on stage 25. The boss is slightly harder hitting. So as I said, my Walking Tomb Drang here is unbooked. He's not fully mastered. He's not max level. And we're going to do the hardest level of the Sand Devils Necropolis. We are disabling his A3. His A3 will reduce the, the cooldown of Exalted Pyre. That doesn't really matter because Godseeker is going to reset his skill cooldown. And this equalized HP, I found it to be more problematic than it needed to be. And it's not required. Again, full auto from the start. Godseeker really should be a little bit speed faster here, but we're going to take the nuke. Godseeker is going to revive herself, and then she's going to revive Walking Tomb Drang. He's going to place the burn here. Now, the important thing to note, at this position, there's only one turn of burn. Now, as we can see here, he will activate the burn. Now, if we can get Master Hexer, that means we can activate it, keep the burn on the target, and he should be able to effectively take one extra tick of HP burn, which should speed this up quite a lot. The only window that you have to do damage here is when he is asleep because that's the only time you can place burns. Otherwise, you're not dealing damage. We can see that Brimstone actually has a big impact. We've got a three star here, so there's a more higher chance that we're going to be able to land that Brimstone, although it may be on cooldown. So we can see the Godseeker's already taken a beat and he's at full HP. He is not even taking a breath. She will get quite low on this difficulty, but as long as she stays alive and she revives on this, this kind of position here, you can see this is the rotation. So, so far we've landed it. But obviously, my walking tomb drain is not 100% on the A2. So if we miss a window, we're basically going to have that 30 second window between the feasting swarms where we're not doing any damage. A booked walking tomb drain wouldn't have this issue. So I'm going to let this run through now to the end um, and then we'll jump back in and you can see sort of the pace that this team can actually go at.
so we're coming in here now at the end and it is around about six minute run it is a bit slower but as i said if the burn doesn't go out we have a 30 second window where we have to wait another 30 seconds because we're not booked so i think when you book this you get master hex so you maybe look at putting 100 crit rate you can get this down to maybe a three minute farm for a two champion commitment we also get five superior oils there go us good good rng so yeah, I think walking Tomb Dreng here is the best option for people looking to farm Spy at stage 25. I think the good positives about this team, you don't have to commit any of your other OP champions. You can even use these builds in other areas of the game. This is compatible to run in Hydra or it's compatible to run in high-end Doom Tower if you want to use Ninja and um, Godseeker in those areas. If you are already using walking Tomb Dreng in Spider 25 farming, you could always look to use another AoE HP burner. Mordecai does it great. Akoth does it just as good. There are perfectly viable other burners. You don't have to use Walking Tomb Drang. Whereas Walking Tomb Drang here is kind of MVP. There's not many people that can do what he can do. Now, if you want to upgrade and get yourself to these stages, just keep in mind that ratio. Make sure Godseeker is about one speed faster than the boss. Uh, at least one speed you can go a lot faster if you want to but something of that range and then make sure Drang and your ninja is within 20 to 25 speed of your god seeker and that should allow you to scale up bit by bit as you climb through the stages if you haven't unlocked it already so there you go guys that is a new team that i think is probably really accessible for a lot of people as long as you've picked up a god seeker in area along the way Walking Tomb Dreng was a fusion about six months ago. Ninja was a free champion, although it was quite a while ago. Other alternatives you could use for this strategy as a DPS slot, you could look to put in a, a sort of Sissia on a force level. You'd need to run her into a boss that is uh, magic based. So that's probably stage 23 or 22, which is not as optimal, but it could work. She again also places a burn and activates it. And she'll also get an extra turn as well. So you always guarantee that burn happens. So she is an option to have. Although she's the squishiest of the lot. So you might find it's difficult to build her to keep her alive. She does need accuracy also. Another option that is a free accessible option if you've done your referrals is Cronum. Obviously Cronum can come in. He can place the burn. And then he can activate that burn with the A3. It's probably going to be less efficient than Ninja. He's a little bit squishier than Ninja in terms of base HP. And he will require accuracy as well. So the build for Cronum is probably going to be just as difficult as Sissia. Although he does have more base HP. He is magic based. So he can do the same stage as Ninja which is stage 24. But will struggle and probably not be able to do stage 25. So you have different affinity options. You've got different things. I would think in terms of a best in slot it's probably going to go ninja for speed walking tomb drang for survivability and then you're looking at probably chronum and sissia on the same level if you don't have any of these champions then you're just looking at probably running a straight burner like a tyrant in that position someone who can basically place hp burn drexar could but he's a triple hit so just keep that in mind he's a free champion everyone gets but that's kind of what you're looking at is a hp burn option outside of those ninja and tomb drang will speed this up dramatically in Clan vs Clan on Tuesday, I'll be booking Walking Tomb Dreng. We'll see how fast I can actually get his team running. But there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope that is going to be of helpful to people. All I've seen so far is really slow five-man built teams in specific tunes. Or I've seen God Tier, Cardiel, Acrisius. I'm glad we've managed to find a fast team that only requires two champions with okay high end gear to some extent but accessible options if you've been farming a bit of regen gear which hopefully you have been if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and as always if you want to see more videos from this channel hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification and those videos will come straight into your feed but i will catch you guys in the next video